Hello everybody, and it's Miranda. If I sound tired, it's because I am. I am always tired, you know me. I muster up some energy to do some stuff, and then I get tired. I'm going to play this game, which is a text adventure. You'll see. You'll see. I shouldn't explain too much. But it's Isle by Sam Barlow. This is the same person who I believe wrote Shattered Memories. And I also think it was her story. Was it her story? Here's the description. Late Thursday night, you've had a hard day and the last thing you need is this, shopping. Luckily, the place is pretty empty and you're progressing rapidly. On to the next aisle. That's how it, there's, okay. That's how it starts and then you have to go from there, but. Aisle started out as a game which would not need the usual meta verbs, i.e. a game with only one turn. The initial idea was, how do I make a game with only one turn interesting? give it lots of endings. In fact, there are many endings, and hopefully every sensible action results in an ending. There is no winning action. There is, however, more going on than just this, and the more endings you see, the more things should become clear. <laughs> Blurb from the Z Files catalog. Um, I think, what did I read from? Okay, listen to this. Isle by Sam Barlow. You are about to read a story, or rather, part of a story. You will be asked to you will be, be asked to define the story by controlling one instant in the life of the main the man whose story it is. Your inve I am so sorry, I'm tired. Your intervention will begin and end the story. But be warned, there are many stories and not all of the stories are about the same man. Okay. Here we go. <coughs> Late Thursday night, you've had a hard day, and the last thing you need is this, shopping. Luckily, the place is pretty empty, and you're progressing rapidly. On to the next aisle. Interesting. Fresh gnocchi. You haven't had any of that since Rome. The aisle stretches to the north and back to the south. The shelves on either side of you block your view for the rest of the supermarket, with only the brightly colored aisles mar aisle markers visible. You have stopped your trolley next to the pasta section, bright plastic bags full of pale skin tone shapes. There is a brunette woman a few meters ahead, filling her trolley with sauces. Oh, who is she? Okay. Let's see. Where do you look at pasta? You glance at the penne. The gnocchi has triggered a memory of a holiday. You remember the pasta museum. Hundreds of different shapes. Swirls, bows, shells, loops, strings. All different, subtly different. And at the middle of it all, Claire? Claire? Hell, it's only pasta. You grab a bag of penne and push the trolley. It's slickly gripping, gripping the floor and wheel onto the next aisle. The end of another story, but then there are others. <laughs> So that's the example. You just say what you're gonna, what you plan to do next. So what do we plan to do next? We plan to, she's filling her trolley with sauces, scream at her. The brunette. You look at the brunette. She's wavering over the various sauces on offer. You don't want her here. You don't want her sharing in your memories. You want her, you want to be alone. You scream, will you please leave me alone? Fuck off. She looks shocked and so scurries around to the next aisle. You breathe in, alone. A security guard in cheap blue uniform approaches from behind. I think you ought to leave. You don't disagree. There's nothing here for you. I don't even like your food. You spit at, <laughs> you spit at the exit doors slide open for you as Another story over, but then. <laughs> I just scream at her for no reason, so. Throw, pa throw pasta at her. The brunette, we learn. You pick up a packet of the penne and watch it trail through the air, bouncing awkwardly off the brunette. Caught unaware, she drops the jar she's holding which shatters on the floor leaving a puddle of grainy red she stares red-faced in disbelief 
you hear the soft crunch of leather boots behind you and turn to face middle-aged security guard. You feign to the left and then run to the right. Faint to the left? I thought it was faint. Oh, I don't know. And then run to the right, out of the exit, into your car. As you pull away with a badly clutched roar, you shoot out of the window. She had it coming, bitch. One more story over. Not the only one. Let's see if it recognizes the name. Can't see any such thing. You can't see any such thing. Okay, so you can't see a hello. Apparently, is this how is how this is taking it? It seems. Shit. You look at the gnocchi. Off white, hint of yellow, dusted with flour. You resent the way it has forced you to nearly remember, but not quite. Fuck shit, fuck. You can't stop yourself from remembering if you want to. Fuck shit, fuck shit. Red in the face, you push past the gnocchi, swinging the trolley around the corner of the aisle. Fucking shit. The story finished. But then. <laughs> Mom, I apologize for all the cursing, but um. It's uh, they're, it's just, they're just words. They're just words. I'm reading words. Eat pasta. The pasta is a seething mass of off-white food. You tear at the plastic bags until the curls and tubes and twists and shells cascade onto the floor and into your hands. Scooping up a collection of different shapes, you cram the pasta into your mouth. It is dry. It is hard. That's what your body is saying. But you learned something a while back. That your body, your eyes, your hands, your heart, isn't always right. No, you learn to listen to your mind. And your mind says soft, warm, slightly salty pasta, tangy sauce. What a feast. They spoil your fun. They take you away, or so your body says. Your mind knows better. You're still in Rome eating pasta, drinking wine. Everything is fine. One more story over, and yet. <laughs> Take sauce. <laughs> you run over to the sauces. You'll need some sauce, something a little spicy. There's a little jar of arabi <laughs> sorry, arabiata. Is it arabiata? That I never looked at it like that. That'll do nicely. The woman moves to the side as you reach past her and grab a couple jars. Thanks, you mutter. She smiles. You walk pa back to your trolley, stranded in the middle of the aisle, grab a bag of spaghetti, and move on to the next aisle. A story finished. Not the only one. Break sauce. Something inside you stirs. You walk over to the sauces, next to the brunette. As you stare at the myriad of jars before you, your eyes slowly unfocus and you lash out. Some of the jars smash as they hit the floor, glassy red wounds. Others roll off down the aisle. The woman is standing, shocked, red sauce slowly dripping down her legs. She turns to look at you, her eyes glassy and white with disbelief. As you slowly back away, you feel hands grab you. What the fuck's your game, mate? You are taken to by two burly store egg sorry. You are taken by two burly store security guards to a little office round back of the store. A policeman arrives. He calls you by your first name. Then another man arrives. Not a policeman, but he is official, and he talks with you. He is sorry. They thought that you were cured, but apparently all they did was push everything below the surface. So deep they didn't notice, and they are the experts. They take you home with them. A story finished. But then... Okay. Um, uh, pasta. Aw, man. <laughs> Sing. Sing a sad song. You start off singing softly to yourself. What must appear to be a mu but a mumble to the other shoppers. But then you slowly get louder and louder until everyone in the shop is glancing nervously at you. It seems the more you sing, the more uncomfortable everyone gets. You stop, chuckle, then continue with your shopping. The aisles seem more empty somehow. Another story done. But there are others. Let's do tap, dance, Ugh. okay fine, dance, dance, 
You put a spring into your step and hop to the slow swing of the, m of the Muzak. You're in a surprisingly jovial mood, but you do stop yourself before you make a scene. Thinking back, it was probably her, Claire, who made you care less what people think. I mean, what is wrong with a little dance if you feel like it? That's one of the things you'll remember her for. Another story over. Not the only one. <laughs> Break spaghetti. Maybe if you had ordered spaghetti rather than gnocchi on that last night, she wouldn't have left you. But you couldn't have helped that. Really. I mean, you don't even like spaghetti. F oh, wait, what? Well, anyway. So it's not your fault. If you don't like spaghetti, she couldn't have expected you to order it. So whose fault is it? Not, her not hers. You both agreed. It was no one's fault. People fall out of love. No, not anyone's fault. Something's fault. Pasta. How stupid does that sound? The spaghetti's fault. Stupid but true. You rake a shelf off the bag of oh, the bags onto the floor. Long packets of spaghetti, small papery bags of macaroni, big sacks of penne. As they hit the floor, you stamp. The bags split like bruised fruit and spill their contents across the floor. The shells hop and skid as you crack and squash them under your feet. The brunette turns, a word glance back, and then scurries on. You kick a, a few stray bows after her, scattering nearby twirls. Inevitably, the guards appear. You let them take you, explaining that you aren't mad. You can imagine a lot of men in your position would be, but you are quite sane. You've never done this kind of thing before. You really are sorry. You'll pay for the cost and the mess. If it helps, you'll apologize to the brunette. Wait, they're not listening. You end up speaking to a balding man who is really very intellectual. You know the sort. And he agrees. You are very sane. He agrees. Love is a dangerous thing. It burns just as many as it warms. He agrees. Tired of stating the obvious, you stop listening. A story finished. Not the only one. Well, you know what? I'm going to stop listening to this. <laughs> I'm sure you want to stop listening to this. So I'm going to stop this. And um, yeah, this is a game called Isle. It's online. And it's on a site that claims it's not secure. So don't put anything in, I assume. Don't want to say that. But you know, it says not secure. I'm sorry. That's just what it told me. Okay, website. It's just what it told me. Um... And that's it. It was done by Sam Barlow, who I am a fan of the things that I have seen of this person. So, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you feel like playing it, it's kind of interesting. And that's it. I, I pretty much said, and that's it. How many times at this point? Okay. I, I gotta go. I gotta go to sleep now. So, bye. Bye. <laughs>